Hello everyone, this is Michael Perez with the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. I want to thank you for tuning in to this video. I'm happy to say we are partnering with our good friends at the Log Cabin Village and talk a little bit about bison. We're going to focus on how bison are utilized today, more specific here at the Nature Center. And then I'm going to turn it over to Shay Adams. She's the Assistant Historic Site Supervisor at the Log Cabin Village. And she's going to talk a little bit about how our ancestors utilized bison. I want to introduce you to our herd, our bison herd here at the Nature Center. We currently have 13 bison. They're not all here right now. Some of them may be in the trees, uh, getting some shade, trying to stay cool. The rest are here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why we have the bison here at the Nature Center. We've had them since the early 70s. We actually got some bison up from the Wichita Mountains. This is where our herd began. And the reason we have them are three reasons. Number one, they're a recreational herd. And that's kind of what you're seeing right now. They'll come up to the uh, fence line as we feed them treats. Uh, range cubes has some, uh, it's fortified hay with some molasses in it. And they love it. So we, we do that to supplement their, their diet here at the Nature Center, but also use it during special events, such as uh, spring break, fall break, winter break, and some holidays where we do bison feed and hay rides. We take, uh, take you all across the property, learning about the, teach you a little bit about the habitats and the focus is bison and the highlight is feeding the bison. So the kids and adults can spread those range cubes and assist us in feeding those bison. So they're a recreational herd. Number two, they're an ecological herd. Their range historically was in the Great Plains and on the Great Plains, they performed several ecological uh, purposes. Number one, there's hooves cause uh, to compact the soil, so soil compaction. Uh, those thick coats you see, they start shedding those in the spring and summer as it gets hot. And birds utilize that, that fur and that hair to make nests. So that's a very uh, beneficial uh, task um, because of the allowing the birds to build their nests with, those, with the hair and the fur. So that's, that's really cool and really helpful for those local uh, habitats. And then third, another reason is if you see close enough, or you probably won't see, there's like insects and flies that may get on their skin. And it's irritating, so they slap it with their tail. You can kind of see them doing that right now. But one of the ways that they can uh, help alleviate that annoyance is by wallowing in the ground. Just wallow on the ground, and as they go move back and forth on the ground, they, because of the large mass of big bodies that they have, they create these depressions in the soil. So when it rains, it fills up and causes like a little microhabitat. Uh, there on the plains for amphibians and other animals that are in the area. So that's a really cool ecological benefit for, uh, from bison. So they're recreational, they're ecological, and the third benefit is they're a conservation herd for us. And that means if someone would like to establish a herd uh, on their property, they can use the genes from our bison because every one of these bison gets tested with the most recent testing available and based on all the genetic testing we've had done uh, for these bison every one of them is 100 percent bison there are no cattle genes so that's a that's really great good to know now every year we get more detailed uh, genetic testing and that might reveal something later but at this point these are all genetically pure bison, so that's really cool. So those are the three main uh, ways, or not ways, but reasons why we have bison and how they serve us here at the Fort Worth Nature Center by allowing uh, the public to view them, so recreational, uh, for them to replicate what they have done historically on their range by providing nests for birds, compacting the soil, creating wallows, and then also uh, they're 100% bison. There's no cattle gene, so uh, conservation, it's just a pure conservation herd. So that's great. And that's why we have the herd out here. They, they do a great job for us and they're great uh, ambassadors for us. And we're so honored to have this iconic animal on our property, uh, uh, working along with us and managing this, uh, this facility for you. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Shay Adams, as I said earlier. She's the Assistant Historic Site Supervisor at the Log Cabin Village, and she's gonna share with you ways that our ancestors utilized bison. 
Thanks, Michael. I'm Shay from Log Cabin Village, and I'm gonna to talk to you today a little bit about the different ways our ancestors used bison on the prairie in the 19th century. Our ancestors relied on bison for food, for tools, and even for fuel. Our American Indian ancestors who lived on the plains also incorporated the bison into religious and social practices. So we're gonna talk a little bit about each of those things just really quick here. Uh, so as you can see in this diagram from St. Joseph's Indian School, you can see the wide variety of uses a bison had for our ancestors. Now, most obviously, bison could be used as food. And I think that's what most of us immediately think of when we think of how you could use a bison on the plains. The meat could be eaten fresh or it could be dried into a jerky. Sometimes bison meat was dried into these thin strips along with dried berries and mixed with the tallow, which is the fat of the bison to make a high protein snack called pemmican. Now I've never had pemmican, but I hear it is delicious. And if you're interested in making your own pemmican, you can find a link to that recipe at the end of this video. But bison didn't just provide food. Many of our Plains American Indian ancestors were nomadic. So that means that they would travel from place to place following food sources like the bison throughout the year. So the hides of the bison were especially helpful in building homes called teepees that could easily be moved from one location to another while still providing good shelter when they were all set up. The hides of bison could also be used to make clothes, drums, saddles, shields, ropes, pretty much anything you can imagine. Our ancestors would tan some hides into a tough leather and leave others untied to keep the leather soft and supple, depending on how it would be used. The sinews, also known as tendons and ligaments of a bison, could be used to make glues or threads for sewing. It could also be used for bowstrings for hunting. We still use sinew today, although most people use an artificial sinew that comes on spools like the one you see here. Speaking of sewing, bison bones could also be used to make tools like needles, like the one that you see here from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And we're still not done with bison uses. Like, imagine that you lived on the plains in the 1800s. Okay, so let's look around. There's not a lot of trees, especially if we're living in the Texas Panhandle or Kansas. There's a lot of grass, but we don't really wanna burn that. We don't wanna start a wildfire, right? So how are we going to fuel our fire if we can't just gather sticks to make a fire like we would if we still live back east? Well, take a look at this photo for the answer to that question. That's right, you're gonna use buffalo chips or dried poop as fuel. Now, this pioneer woman in Lake and Kansas looks like she'll have enough fuel to last her for quite a while. As you can imagine, the bison played an important role for our ancestors on the plains. Many of our American Indian ancestors honored bison in stories and in religious practices. Buffalo skulls were sacred to our Lakota ancestors, while our Kiowa ancestors held sun dances before the summer bison hunt as early as 1860. So it's obvious that the bison would have played a pretty big role in the sun dance ceremonies. Now it's indisputable that bison played an important role in the survival of all of our ancestors on the Great Plains. However, by the late 19th century, the bison were on the edge of extinction due to overhunting by Americans moving west. Over the past century, organizations like the Fort Worth Nature Center have helped responsibly conserve and manage this iconic species. And so now we actually see the bison making a comeback on the American plains. And that's been an incredible thing to see across the country. So I hope that you'll head out to the Nature Center to see their bison and come out to Log Cabin Village to learn more about how our ancestors lived with the bison. Thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you soon.